Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the third Sunday in the Advent season. A reading from the words of the Apostle Paul in the church at Corinth. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our modern tendency is to spiritualize what is about to happen this morning in baptism. When Paul speaks of baptism, he most certainly cannot mean water baptism. It is too trivial a thing for the apostle. When the Spirit of God is poured on God's people in Acts chapter 2, we think surely this pouring is only a spiritual pouring. After all, the things of the Spirit must be spiritual. When Luke, Paul, Peter talk about how effective baptism is, we generally brush off such assertions and affirm that this is a spiritual benefit that we get like having good parents, good food, and good books. But what have we done? What we have done is we have turned the Spirit against water. We have told ourselves that the Spirit likes to work alone, outside of any physical needs, outside of materiality. Surely God, the Spirit, surely He would not stoop so low as to do mighty things through water. Would he? But indeed, this morning we affirm that contrary to certain traditions, the power of baptism is not in me as a minister of the gospel, nor is it in the water itself. But any baptism comes only, any benefit of baptism comes only because it is precisely the Spirit of God that is using the means of water to accomplish his purposes. When the New Testament writers write about baptism, they are almost always referring to this act that we are about to witness this morning. Baptism is the working of the Spirit through the means of water to bring nursing infants, little children, teenagers, adults, middle-aged, the elderly, the dying, into the body of Christ, all through the means of water. And this morning we practice this ancient biblical imperative with Gabriel and Judah Peterson. Matt and Stephanie, we are grateful as a community that you are loyal to this congregation, to the Church of Jesus Christ, but most importantly, that you express your loyalty to the promises of God for your children. And through this act, you are affirming your desire to see your two boys marked by the promise of God all their days. Gabe and Judah, to be baptized, my little brothers. It's a call to love Jesus sincerely, to honor Him daily, and to follow Him all your days. This promise is for you, so cherish it, remember it, and live it for the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ. Israel Peterson, what is your profession of faith? Judah Israel Peterson, I baptize you, my brother, into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit descend upon your heart and remain with you always. Amen. Gabriel Zion Peterson, what is your profession of faith? Gabriel Zion Peterson, I baptize you, my brother, into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit, descend upon your heart and remain with you always. Amen.
Matt, Stephanie, Joel, Nathan, Christopher, Judah, Gabriel Peterson, Karen and Jonathan Rook, Lizzie Rea, Ben Forney, Max Graham, Dan Morgan, Marshall and Ruth Yachman, Jacob Larimer, and Valerie Fudges. Maury Fudges, right? <laughs> Welcome back, Maury. <laughs> you have made it. You have fulfilled our requirements. You have kayaked over the Niagara Falls. You swam with great white sharks. Survived the winning of the bulls in Spain. And then you're still here, alive and well. For those of you who are visiting, all he did was attend a four hours of choir's class <laughs> and profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now you are prepared to join this newly, this reformed evangelical church that takes Jesus seriously, the gospel with utmost joy, and life as an act of worship. Like baptism, sometimes membership can be trivialized also in our culture today. After all, why become a member of the church? Interestingly, no one has ever asked that question about membership in God's covenant in Israel. And really, historically, that question has never been asked, why membership, until the last 50 years of church history. Because everyone knew that membership in the church formalizes something. It connects you to the other people. It brings you under authority, as Hebrews 13 says. To be joined to a local church this morning, my brothers and sisters, is one of the most counter-cultural things that you will ever do in your lives. And I am sure glad, I am so pleased, that all 17 of you have not allowed modernity's individualism to shape your view of the church. I am pleased with that. Today you are entering, in case you have not yet noticed, into a very flawed church, where community life can be very difficult, messy, and complicated, but this morning we're also entering into a church that is committed to union and communion with one another, and most importantly, union and communion with your Lord and your God, Jesus the Christ. <laughs> 